Hello everyone, and in this video we're going to be building the Search Dad Jokes app with the View 3 Composition API and the I Can't Hash Dad Joke. So this is going to be built in View 3, and you can see how this app functions. So if I add a search term into here, so like sandwich, and then press go, or press enter, it'll send a request to this API and spit out all of these jokes. So I can also, whenever you're sending a request, it says loading, while the request is loading. And if I add in something that's not in the joke database, then it says no jokes found. So let's get started. So we have our project open inside of VS Code. And to create our project, we're going to be using the Vue CLI. And if you need to install the Vue CLI, then you can just run npmi-g for global Vue CLI. And this is the official view CLI. So after that, you should be able to just run view, and it should be giving you a, a bunch of these commands. Or I could do view hash hash version, and it'll give you the version that you're using. And I'm using 4.5.6. So we can clear that, and we're going to create a view project, view 3 project. So you need to make sure you have view 4, version 4, to be able to use view 3. So we can just run view create dot to create it inside of the current directory. It should confirm it, yes. And we're just going to be using, uh, we're just going to be using Babel and that's it. Uh, three. And we're going to be using dedicated config files and no. All right, so I'll be back when this is finished. So it is finished setting up our dad jokes project so now you can see that we can run npm run serve to run it in development so we're just going to run npm run serve and you can see it's just starting up our view project so you can see it has all of our boilerplate code set up and we're not going to be using any of this so we can just delete all of this this is really useful though if you're a beginner to view in which case you probably shouldn't be watching this video <laughs> Alright, so let's just create a hello world and put in hello world. So we can just remove all this boiler clip paint. Alright, so if we go inside of here, we can launch it, and you can see we have our hello world program. So I should be able to change this to hello Carter should say Carter. Alright, so we have hot reload. And to test out the view composition API, everything that you use with the view composition API needs to be inside of a setup function. So let's create a setup function. And inside of here, you set everything should be in here. Everything that you're using inside of the template. If it's dynamic, then it should be in the setup. So you need to be using these things called refs to define all of these things that you're going to be using in the template. So let's import ref from view. And that imports it. So now we can use this ref. So now if I wanted to set the value of my name inside of our ref, so then we can use it in the template, I could set const name equals and then ref and then inside of here, this is the initial value of this ref. So I'm going to set the initial value to Carter. And so this is type of string, if you're using TypeScript. And after this, we can just return name. And then it's allowed to be used in the template. So I could replace this and interpolate this end using name. All right. And you can see it still says Carter. So if I were to create an input, just to test this out, and then set the model of it to a name, and set the type, most text, then you can see that it automatically says Carter because the value of this has to always be to this name. So if I change it in here, hello, and then I just changed it to like Joe, then it says hello Joe. So it's automatically updating all the state management for you. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using the API to get all of these jokes so that we can search them from here. 
So you can go to this URL in the description of this video if you want to figure that out. So we can remove all of this, and so now we just have our 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 main code that we're going to be using. And so let's just build out the boilerplate of this code. So first off, let's just have an H1, and let's say search jokes. All right, so we got the title of our app. Now we want to have a form. And here we want to put in the search box so then people can search through the jokes. So we're going to create a label because you got to have accessibility and query. And then inside of here, let's have our input. And this is going to be a type of text. So we're just building out the HTML. So let's, now instead of here, let's have a OL. And that's going to be all of our jokes. So we could just put in joke. And there we go. So you can see that we're going to search in here. And then we actually also need a, a button to go. And this is going to be a submit button. And then the value of this, so the text that's going to be inside of it, is going to be go. All right. So we can enter some stuff in here. Then press go and you can see it's automatically doing the default form action so we have all of our markup up and now all we have to do is add the functionality so first off let's just do some requests to make sure that our api how do we request with the api so let's const res equals and then let's make this async for a second and then we're just going to fetch to the API. So to search jokes, what we have to do is we have to go to the the endpoint and then slash search and send a get request to that. And then inside the headers, we need to add a accept application slash JSON. So headers accept application slash json so then we're actually getting data so that's the response and then const data equals and this needs to await this equals await re response that json and that'll get our data and then we can just log out data and we should be able to see something in here all right so it looks like there we go so you can see we have our results, and inside of the results is all of our jokes. So we're actually going to limit this to a number of 10 jokes. So if you see on here, there's a, a limit, and that limits the number of jokes that you're going to be getting back. Also, we can add a term, and it's going to search inside of the jokes for that term. So if we created a ref for that, we could use const joke query equals and then ref a referral and then the default value of this is just going to be an empty string. Then we can change this to a template tag and and term equals and then put in that joke query. So first off, it's just going to be Actually, we need to do dot value because that's how you get the value of refs. Inside of here, it abstracts out the code. So then, if we were to use joke query in here, it would behind the scenes be just getting the value of it. Oh, oops. All right, so we can take that out. So now it should be still sending a response. And you can see we only have 10 response, uh, jokes inside of the results. So we can actually, now we can not make this async, and we want to make sure, make a function that will send a request every single time we press this go button. So first off, let's create a function that will update our jokes. Async function update jokes. Okay, and then we can put this in here, and that's what we use to get our data. And now we need to have something that's going to hold all of our jokes inside of it. So we can create a jokes variable equals ref 
and then the default value of this is going to be null. So now, inside of here, when we're updating our jokes, first off, we want to set the value of it to null. Sorry, jokes set value equals null. And I'll show you later why we should be doing this. And then we want to set value of jokes dot value equals data dot results. And now it should have all of our jokes inside of it. And we want to be calling this update jokes right away in the page loads. So then we can get the jokes for the empty search query. So now we can return jokes and jokes joke query and update jokes. And all of these will be accessed in the template. So we can bind this input, the value of this, to the search. So let's say the model equals and then joke query. And then inside of the input, we need to make it so then it updates the jokes. But actually, we need to add more functionality. So then it's not thinking that we're sending a PHP request with this, the question mark. So instead of doing this, we need to create a new function, async function, and then update jokes form. So this is going to be giving us an event, and we don't want it to be doing the default action. So we can do e.prevent default and that'll make sure that doesn't happen the weird refresh and everything and then after that we want to just do await update jokes so the reason I'm doing async await is because if I counseled out uh, and then put this if I added this function into here and then added at submit equals update jokes form if we did this, and then inside of here, we said started getting jokes. And then under this, we said got, oh, got jokes. Okay, so, all right, so we aren't seeing anything right now. And that's because we need to be pressing this. So you see, it says started getting jokes, and then it finished getting the request. And then it says got joke. So if we remove this away, then that means that the, this function's going to finish as soon as it calls the last thing. And it's just going to do it all at once without waiting for everything to finish. So then if we do refresh and then hit go, you can see it said all of this and then it finished loading. So if we add in this await here, then it's better if we wanted to add in more functionality underneath this. So then everything before here is using the old jokes, and then everything underneath is using the new ones. So that's basically why we're doing that. Alright, so if, I, if we put in some text, then we need to make sure that we handle all of the jokes. So inside of here we can add an li, and then we can just loop through all the jokes. So v-4 equals joke in jokes. And we need to make sure that jokes is even available. And then we can just set the key equals joke.id because it gives us an ID of the joke. And then inside of here, we can just put joke.joke. .joke. And you can see it's giving us all this data. So if you wanted to see what the request gives us, you can just log out um, beneath here. Jokes that value. So all of these jokes have an ID and then they have a joke inside of it. So that's what we're using inside of our for loop. All right. So now we're looping through all these jokes and we're saying if there are jokes, so another, another thing that we should be adding is if it can check to see if there aren't any jokes or if it's loading. So the reason that we're setting the value of jokes to null 
is because that means that the value of jokes is going to be null until we get our results and set the jokes to it. So that means that we can check whenever the value of jokes is null, and that means that it's loading. So before all of this, we can add an h3. Sorry, my emit's not working for some reason. And inside of here, we can say loading. And then we can do this if not jokes. And then we can just do v else. So then in here, if I send in a, a query into here, so like sandwich, you can see it said loading and then it got to start jokes. So now we need to add in something so then if there are, it isn't giving us any jokes back. So actually what we could do is we could say v else if and then jokes dot length. And so this means that the value of jokes dot length has to be a true value. And the only number that is a false value is zero. So that means that if jokes dot length is equal to zero, then this is going to return false. So that means that it won't be showing this. So that's why we can do that. All right, so now we can add another v else. And then we can say no jokes found. And then if we put something in here, so like is df, it shouldn't be in there. You can see it says no jokes found. So if I search a valid request, so like, um, I'm sure there's something up, up. And it gives us the jokes. And then while we're waiting for it, it says loading. Now another thing that you might be able to do is cache all of the requests that you've gotten. So then if it says, if it's already sent a request with the search term of pop, then it shouldn't really be sending another request to the API. So what we could do if we weren't wanting to be nice to the API owners is we could, instead of just having this go button, we could set it so then every single time this joke query changes, it would send a request and update the jokes. So how we could do that is we could use the watch. And that watch is a ref, and every time the value changes, it runs a callback function. So we could do watch, and then what do we want to watch? We want to watch joke query. And then every time this updates, value of it updates, we want to run update jokes. All right, so if I typed in some stuff, you can see it's sending requests every time we're getting input. So if I search sandwich, you can see it's getting the data every single time we add an input. But I don't think we should be using this because uh, we want to be nice to the API developers and it's a free API. So then you should just add in a go button. So we can add this back in and remove the watch. Also, another thing that we could be doing right here is instead of repeating the joke, is we could be just structuring this with the ID and joke. And that we'll just get the ID and joke property and allow them within the scope of this element, this code block. So you can see we built a simple app that works and it allows you to send requests to this API every time you press this go button using the view 3 composition API. So if you have any questions about this tutorial, or if you want to say thanks, I'd appreciate it if you guys left a comment. So I hope I see you guys in the next video.